What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today we're doing another underwater testing video, this time on the drop shot. We'll be testing different weights, baits, and leader lengths, comparing the action so you guys know what to throw when you're fishing offshore for bass. So let's get into it. So before we jump into the footage, I want to explain the concept for this video as always. What we're doing is casting fishing lures into the deep end of an Olympic sized swimming pool to replicate the conditions of making a long cast on offshore structure. That means we're casting the bait into 13 feet of water and making a 30 yard cast. That way we can simulate what these baits look like when you're working them down there really deep. And so in this video we're testing the drop shot. And a lot of guys fish drop shots both by making long casts offshore and also by fishing vertically right beside the boat. And so we're gonna be testing both types of retrieves in this video. And we have a lot of different baits we're gonna be testing from your traditional plastic baits like a robo worm to some floating baits like this Elaztec worm from Strike King or from Z-Man. And then also some small finesse swim baits like this Kitek. And again, we're testing it with different size weights from 3 16 ounce all the way up to 3 8 ounce and i'm doing all these tests with a 7 foot 2 medium light action spinning rod 6 pound leader line and then 10 pound braided line main line and again testing different size leaders with that fluorocarbon and i am hooking all these hooks with a size 6 vmc nico hook and so i'll link all of the equipment that i'm using in this video down in the description below so you guys can check it all out this is my standard setup for the drop shot and so now that we kind of know the testing procedure i want to jump straight into the footage and start talking about how all these baits looked underwater so for the first test, we want to start with a very standard setup for a drop shot, which is just a six inch robo worm on that size six VMC Nika hook and we nose rigged it. And then we put it with a 316 sounds drop shot weight and then a 12 inch leader between the weight and the hook. And we cast that bait down in deep water. And as you can probably see from this footage, this is not professional underwater camera work. I am working on trying to improve how we film these videos, but I think we got some pretty good footage for two guys who taped a GoPro to a metal pole and then tried to follow the bait underwater. But we will get the footage to be a little bit better in the future but hopefully this will do for right now. And so as we take a look at this bait moving through the water, this bait has really good action in the setup. As we move the bait, you can see that it is swimming through the water and has a pretty lifelike action. And then when you stop the bait, it has that slow, natural fall, almost like a Senko when you fish it up in shallow water. And I didn't really expect that this drop shot would have this action when you cast it 30 yards from the boat. I kind of had this impression that the bait would sit either right on the bottom or it would sit 12 inches right off the bottom and kind of stay stationary 12 inches off the bottom almost suspending and so it was really cool to see that this bait has that consistent rise and then fall to it and this is something that I really need to take advantage of when I get to the lake because I never thought about my drop shot looking like that underwater and I feel like that could trigger a lot of strike especially if you ensure that, that bait comes all the way up to the top of the leader 12 inches and then you give it time to fall back down the bottom which might take six seven eight seconds and so knowing this I should be able to retrieve the bait a lot better in the future and so that was the first test with the 316 sounds weight and so before we change up anything I want to rig the bait a little bit differently and that's wacky rigging it, which is basically taking the hook and putting it through the middle of the worm. And one thing that I thought was really interesting in this test is that I assumed that that bait would fall very much horizontally down to the bottom and the bait would almost be parallel to the surface of the bottom. But instead, that bait stood straight up with the nose of the bait pointing towards the pool. And that's probably how I rigged the bait. There was probably a little bit more of the nose of the bait as opposed to the tail of the bait on one side of the worm or the other. And what that's gonna do is cause that bait to sink nose first. And so, unlike my expectations where that bait would stay perfectly horizontal to the bottom, it was now perpendicular to the bottom and it is going to look a lot different underwater. So, 
it does still have a pretty good action when you're moving that bait and you can see the kind of tails will go in and out and pulsate, which is kind of what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that nose down look to that wacky rig worm. And so I really like that look as well. It's something different and I do want to make sure that I test in the future where exactly you need to be rigging these worms in the center to make sure that they are you know, parallel to the surface of the bottom and we'll look at that in future videos. But that's kind of a test for your traditional hand poured six inch drop shot worm. And again, there's a ton of different worms on the market you can use, this is just the one I use. And so next up, before we change up any of the weights or leader lengths, I just wanna try some other baits. And the first one was a floating worm. And this is just a methylate floating worm that Striking used to make, seven inch finesse worm. They still make this worm and also Z-Man makes other floating finesse worms as well. And when I put this floating worm on the drop shot hook, first off, you can see it's a little bit hard to see this pink worm in the pool. I'll make sure to use more solid dark colors in the future. But what you'll find is that that bait will actually sit perfectly still and suspend at the top of that 12 inch leader. And this is kind of what I was expecting the bait to look like for whatever reason when I was using the standard plastic worm. And this is really cool because I now know that if I want to target those suspended bass with a drop shot and want to keep it there in front of their face, I need to be using a floating worm on that drop shot. And really that bait will stay right there in that you know one foot off the bottom area when using that 3 16 ounce weight. Now going to heavier weights will change this in the future and so we'll take a look at that but for now this bait looks really good when you just put it on you know, nose hook rig and work down there on the bottom. Now I did try to wacky rig the worm, but for whatever reason it got tangled up in the one shoot I did, I didn't notice. So I don't have the wacky rig uh, look for the floating worm, I apologize there. But one more thing I wanted to try was actually a small three inch swim bait from Kitech. And this is just the Kitech uh, swing impact four inch, it's actually a four inch swim bait. And I just nose hooked it on that drop shot and it had a pretty interesting action when I was working it down there, though it didn't have as much of that lifelike motion as the other two worms did. And I also tried to just cast that bait out there let it sink to the bottom and then slowly reel it in. And you can see how I'm reeling it in with my spinning reel here. And for whatever reason, that bait just didn't have that great action with that light drop shot weight. And I really probably wouldn't try to cast that drop shot and slowly reel it in like this in the future with that real light weight. But again, as we change up the weights and the leader lengths, it might look a little bit better. So now that we've taken a look at all the different worms, I wanna switch up and start taking a look at the different weights still with that 12 inch leader. So again, for those first tests, we're using a 316 ounce drop shot weight. But now I want to jump up to a quarter ounce drop shot weight. And then we'll also use a 38 ounce weight. And I wanna see what these different weights will do to the bait when you're casting it into deep water. And so as we jump up from the 316 to the quarter ounce weight, the first thing I notice is that the baits are all staying closer to the bottom, which kind of surprised me. And if we take a look at our traditional plastic robo worm, what it seems like is that when I'm moving that bait through the water, that quarter ounce weight is weighing down that bait or that line and pulling that bait closer to the bottom and almost pulling it down quickly to the bottom. And this is super fascinating to me because I would have never thought that the weight of this drop shot weight would have that big of an impact on how that bait moves through the water because that weight is trailing the bait, not in front of it. But it seems to make sense now when you're dragging that weight that that bait might stay a little bit more tight to the bottom and closer to the bottom because if you pull that bait up, the resistance from that heavier weight is pulling the bait down. And you'll notice that that happens with the plastic worm, which keeps it tighter to the bottom, doesn't make it go as high off the bottom, but also with a floating worm. And when we put the floating worm on there, it almost causes that bait to have somewhat of a recoil effect where you pull that worm, it gets pulled down towards the bottom, then recoils back up as it rises up. And so it actually gives this bait kind of a cool action in the fact that the bait will dive down into the water and then rise back up, up almost like a floating crankbait. And so this could be a really interesting technique to use when those fish are maybe a little more aggressive and you wanna bring that bait up and down the water column just a little bit and get those more aggressive fish to feed. And so the lighter weight didn't cause these baits to 
sink towards the bottom or pull them towards the bottom as much as the quarter ounce weight. And you know, as we then put them on swim bait as well, what I notice is that the swim bait will actually swim a little bit better when I'm reeling it on that steady retrieve with that quarter ounce weight because it is kind of weighing that bait down a little bit more, giving it more resistance, allowing me to reel the reel a little bit quicker, giving the swim bait more action. And so in general, what this heavier drop shell weight was doing was keeping the baits deeper and also also giving that bait a little bit more action and making it a little more erratic. So that was really interesting. And then I also upsized from the quarter ounce to the 3 8 ounce. And the 3 8 ounce basically just magnified the effects and made the baits stay even closer to the bottom. And then it made the swim bait action even a little bit better. And so when I was reeling that swim bait, the swim bait would kick a little bit more. And then you get more rebound effect from this floating worm where it would dive down even a little bit deeper and then rise back up. And then with the regular robo worm, it was keeping it even closer to the bottom. And so from all these tests, what I'm basically seeing is that if you're trying to be very subtle and present a very natural looking bait to lethargic bass, I would go with that 316 sounds weight. And even though it might take a while for that bait to get down there and you have to move it slower, it's going to give the most natural approach, something that's very slow and methodical and again, maybe more natural. But if those fish are very aggressive and they want something that's darting or moving maybe in the summertime or different times of the year, going to that heavier quarter ounce or the 3 8 ounce weight might get you some extra strikes. And also that heavier weight works better with the swim baits. So that's just some really interesting results I wasn't expecting. And I think that that's going to be really helpful as I start fishing the drop shot more this year. Now, the other thing I wanted to test is the actual leader length of this drop shot. And so what I did is test the bait on a 12 inch leader with a quarter ounce weight, and then with a six inch leader with a quarter ounce weight, and then a four foot leader with a quarter ounce weight. So all of them are with a quarter ounce weight. And if we take a look at the different leader lengths, here's the standard 12 inch leader, which we were just looking at for a while. And then here is what the bait looks like with a six inch leader and you can see it first with the robo worm their standard plastic worm and this is a really really cool look to this worm really it keeps that bait tired to the bottom and it kind of dulls the falling action when you're throwing this regular plastic worm so that bait isn't really having a long time to fall but it's also keeping it closer to the bottom and so as those fish are locked in on the bottom it may not be a bad way to get those fish to react just shortening that leader. And this also might work better if you're fishing in shallower water where those fish are only maybe, let's say eight or 10 feet deep. And then if we put that six inch leader with the floating worm, this has awesome action. Really that bait just sits right in front of those fish, six inches off the bottom. And if I was going to be fishing this floating worm, I would probably go with a six or an eight inch leader a lot of the times because it will just float that bait right above their eye line and get those fish to go crazy. And so, you know, you can definitely get away with the 12 inch leader, but that six inch leader may have its place. And the bait did have pretty good action too with that short leader with the swim bait and it swam pretty well as well. So it was really nice to test out that shorter leader and something I need to experiment with in the lake to see how the fish react to the shorter leader versus the longer leader. It's hard to say just by looking at it in a pool, but again, I'm gonna be doing a lot of on the water testing to follow up all these underwater testing videos so that you can see what happens in the pool and how it affects fish and actually works on the lake. And so be on the lookout for those videos on my channel and subscribe to the channel if you wanna be notified of those videos and make sure you don't miss any of them. I'm posting every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on the channel, guys, so you'll be able to see all these videos. And so that was a six inch leader. Next up, we went to a four foot leader. And a four foot leader was super long, but it gave the bait amazing action. If we take a look at the four foot leader with the robo worm, you can see that that bait is going to have a really slow, long fall. And I feel like when fish are super pressured, it's almost like fishing a weightless worm, but you can fish it in 20, 30 feet of water. And what you can do is cast that bait out there, raise your bait up all the way up to the top of that four foot leader, and then wait that 10 or 15 seconds for that bait to glide all the way down to the bottom. And I think that this 
again, could be a great way to get those lethargic fish to bite and something I definitely have to try when you get out on the lake. And I might even try that this upcoming weekend in my beaver lake tournament I'll be fishing. And so that was awesome. I love that look of that worm falling on that super long leader. And one thing I did notice too is when you went to those heavier weights on that long leader, that bait stayed pretty close to the bottom because it would pull that bait down. So if I was going to go for that super long leader, I'd be using a 3 16 ounce weight just to make sure my approach is as natural as possible. And then I also tried the floating worm on that four foot leader. And again, this bait looks awesome. It floats four foot off the bottom and it's gonna sit right in front of those fish. And it's a great option if those fish are suspended at a very specific depth, like let's say four or five feet off the bottom. And kind of like that Carolina rig I did in my last underwater testing video where I was using the lizard and the french fry to sit in front of those fish's face, you can do the same thing with the drop shot. And it might even be better because you can use that lighter line, which may make those fish a little bit less spooky. And so just some different applications for these floating baits that I find interesting. And you know, the only other thing I tested in the pool guys is testing the motion of these baits when I am fishing this bait vertically. And so what I did is basically just drop the bait right vertically down, straight in front of me into the pool, you know, not even casting it anywhere, just dropping it in the pool. And I wanted to see what the robo worm and the floating worm look like when I fish them vertically. And this is another test that really surprised me because what I found is that with the traditional robo worm, that bait would basically sit tail down as I was shaking it. And the tail would just fall and it would basically be sitting perfectly vertical up and down. And then with the floating worm, it was the exact opposite. Instead of the tail going down towards the bottom, the tail floated straight up towards the surface. But in both cases, these worms are sitting perfectly perpendicular to the bottom of the lake or basically sitting straight up and down. And one thing I do a lot when I'm fishing offshore for spotted bass and I'm video game fishing or fishing vertically with my graph is actually wacky rig these robo worms. And I can see now why that wacky rig might be useful because what it do does is it will present that bait parallel to the bottom or basically it'll sit horizontally in the water. And what that will do is get that bait to maybe look more like a bait fish or a bluegill because there's not that many bait fish that are gonna be sitting straight up in the water up and down. They're gonna be sitting more horizontally. And so that might be why I get a lot more bites when I wacky rig my worm when I'm fishing video game fishing and fishing vertically. And if you guys do want to learn how to fish with your electronics, with a drop shot vertically, check out this video that's on my channel. It's a complete guide to video game fishing. It's like 40 minutes long. I spent, a, you know, I spent like 30 or 40 hours making that video, guys. It took a lot of effort. And so definitely check that video out because it is the best guide on the internet for video game fishing or vertical fishing with your electronics. So that's basically it, guys. That's all of the different tests I did with the drop shot. I was at the pool for only about 45 minutes because we were testing out different filming techniques. So I I wasn't able to test everything I wanted to do with all the different baits, but I think this is a good starting point. And I do want to hear your feedback in the comments. You guys have great suggestions on different ways I can set up my rigs, things that you've done in the past that have been successful, things I should test in the future. And so a couple things I'm going to do in upcoming videos are take your suggestions, to either film a brand new video about drop shotting and all the things you want me to test, or just kind of compile all of your cool ideas into one video and say, you know, top 10 ideas from under underwater testing videos, something like that. So definitely leave comments. I will take note of all of them, even if I don't have a chance to respond to every single one of them, and we will use those in future videos. And one other thing you guys can do that will really help me out is to leave a like on this video. Every video so far in this underwater testing series has had over a thousand likes and it's caused the videos to do really well, which allows me to continue to make them. If I can get 20 to 30,000 views in every video, I can justify the cost of renting out the pool and getting all the baits and everything for these tests. But if I'm not getting that view mark, I'm not gonna be able to keep doing these tests. And I love doing them, so please leave a like. It's super simple. Just go down there, press the thumbs up, and it'll ensure that I can keep making all of these underwater testing videos. So really appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, as I mentioned earlier, please do that as well, so you can see these videos. I'll be making them every single week going forward. And so you'll be able to see a lot of cool tests based on your suggestions and stuff that I've thought of as well. So thanks again for checking out the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.